Hello, in this video, I want to start talking about the topic of how much capital should you have set aside or plan to spend on electricity over the next couple of years, if that's how long our bear market will be. So on our channel, we recently did a community post here, basically polling everyone of like, how much are you currently spending on electricity per month to run your mining farm? So for myself, I'm currently in that around 500 US dollar per month range. And if I had more four gig cards plugged in, I would switch my vote to 500 to a thousand dollars. But I think this is an important piece of data that we should start looking at because this will have a large effect on how much capital should we actually set aside. For example, if we have $500 electric bill and we think this next speculative bear market will be 24 months, then we should plan to have at least $12,000 set aside or plan to spend $12,000 over the next two years to just pay for the electric bill to run our mining hardware. Now, I'm personally wanting to be a little bit more uh, safe on that number, so I would probably plan for 36 months. So at a $500 electric bill, I would plan to spend at least eighteen dollars to $20,000 in electric over the next three years. And you don't have to have like, you know, $18,000 cash sitting aside and you just pay out of it every month because I think, you know, you can use some of that capital in the meantime, or maybe you don't even have that capital sitting aside. But basically all I want to really focus in on this video is at least starting to look through your own numbers. You can probably pull up a spreadsheet for yourself, start punching in the numbers of, okay, do I, if I actually want, want to mine through a speculative bear market, and I can tell you this just from experience of like, I, I was not into GPU mining back in 2018, 2019, but I was building and selling computers. So I can at least share some of my experience, which I'll do now. I remember I was building computers back in the end of 2018, all the way through 2019, even into the beginning of 2020. And a lot of the GPUs I were buying were from ex GPU miners. I remember at the end of 2018, there were some people who had some very substantial mining farms. Now I didn't have that much money back then. So maybe I was buying like five, six, seven, or eight GPUs at a time. And they were all the Polaris RX 570, four gig and eight gig cards. And like a lot of people were getting out of mining because it had been unprofitable already for at least a couple of months and people didn't want to float the electric bill. And I can't blame them because it was a very expensive and unprofitable time at that time to mine because there was a, like a little part there at the end of 2018 into the beginning of 2019 where mining was completely unprofitable. You might be, you know, spending 30 cents a day in electric, but you might only be making 20 or 15 cents a day in revenue. And that's where it made absolutely no sense. So you had large mining farms, even Bitsby Trippin talks about this on his YouTube channel, where they basically shut everything down for a couple of months until at least the break even numbers started to come back into play. And basically, even just from my experience, there were a lot of people dumping and selling mining hardware during this time period. And to be quite honest, the best time to get into mining was not immediately after the cryptocurrency crash. Like you can see, like uh, the price of Ethereum started to dip in the, let's say, second quarter of 2018, had a little rebound. But, you know, by the time summer of 2018 started, uh, the cryptocurrency prices started to really bleed off a lot. And if you also looked at the overall economy, I believe the stock market itself was not doing so well at this time either. I believe they had increased interest rates or something. So that's also one thing to keep in mind that you need to be aware of what's going on in the overall, econ overall economy because it's kind of like, same pants, different pockets. It's like all the, all these markets are all tied together one way or another. It's like when we had this large speculative stock bubble, basically, which happened between, you know, 2020 and 2021, where you had, you know, stocks like Tesla go up a ton and there's a whole bunch of other ones. But now we're on the flip side of that, where it's like we were up in that huge speculative bubble. And now we're kind of going reverse because basically right here at the peak of Bitcoin is when the Fed said, okay, we're not going to be doing quantitative easing anymore. We're going to start reducing our balance sheet. And basically they started to withdraw their liquidity from the market, which basically signaled a perfect top in the market. Like here they were talking about, okay, we're going to increase interest rates here. They're like, okay, we're actually going to start, you know, reducing how much funds we're putting into their balance sheet or whatever. I'm not a financial expert, but at least I'm starting to be more aware of what's going on in other markets and how that affects cryptocurrency as a GPU miner myself. But basically, as soon as they stopped putting injecting funds in and started re like reducing the amount of money they were putting in the market, uh, cryptocurrency along with the overall stock market started to go down. And I mean, now that interest rates have also hiked up a lot, we're sitting back down here at almost, you know, a sub $1,000 ETH. As of today's recording, you know, we bounced up a nice a bit 
it. So I'm now selling at a $1,200 Ethereum. And even if ETH goes up to $1,800, I'll still be selling because my long-term plan now has focused, well, like my focus is now shifted to planning for that bear market. If I want to mine for three years, I need $18,000 set aside, which means let's say hypothetically I mine one ETH, I'll need to sell that ETH. and Well, I'll have to sell a whole bunch of ETH, honestly, to build up that cash reserve. I'm, I'm a good way to my cash reserve, which is good, but these are just things that I want to consider. Also, how long will the next bear market be? Now, I yes, you can look at historical charts and estimate, okay, maybe it's two, three years, which I think is perfectly fine to look at historical data to kind of like get a rough idea, but I think it's also important to just keep in mind like what was the overall economy situation at the time? What were interest rates like? What was the stock market doing? Because now we've just went into a huge bubble and it's kind of like we're coming to a point where it's like specifically for housing and living costs it's like now that interest rates are coming up and even like the 10-year treasury like even from last or not even last summer this is 2020 basically where interest rates have been dropped to zero so this lost so this uh, the interest rate on this 10-year treasury dropped a lot and now since uh, march of 2022 it's skyrocketed pretty much doubled so now you're looking at you know six percent uh, 7% mortgage rates, which is, you know, very expensive because that makes like even owning an average house very expensive per month. I think on like a $300,000 home purchase, you're spending upwards of $2,000, $2,500 a month or something. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's, it is pretty expensive to service all of that debt now. Um, but yeah, basically I would also take a look at now, uh, beyond just now you figured out how much capital do you need set aside, but then also looking at the overall economy and start doing some research into that beyond just crypto, of course, to look at, okay, what is potentially to come? What does the next bullish case for crypto look like? And that in, if crypto follows like the stock market and the real estate market, then it probably were in a situation where we need really loose, you know, monetary policy in order for cryptocurrency to do well, unless it's going to step in as an actual inflation hedge, which over this last two years, it has not been a good inflation hedge unless obviously bought in this bear market here, which I don't even think you can argue as an inflation hedge. It's more like a speculative asset that you're buying, hoping that it appreciates largely in price when we go into the next big bubble. Um, but yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to cover in this video. I know it wasn't that concise or professional and stuff, but I just wanted to start sharing more of my thoughts of like, yes, I am getting prepared for the next bear market where I do plan on mining some coins that where it's like, for example, if Ethereum difficulty, assuming it doesn't go proof of stake, but we'll just use ETH for this example. If Ethereum difficulty drops from 800 Terra hash down to like maybe 250 Terra hash, 400 Terra hash range, like, you know, you're going to be yielding a lot more coin than you are now. I don't think it would make sense to huddle at maybe a 400 Terra hash mark, but maybe if you go back down to a point where you're yielding at an actual like large amount of coins, then yeah, that's where I will be turning my rigs on in the bear market if we're at that break even mark and I will be paying electric out of pocket and starting to build up uh, basically a collection of different coins, whether it's Ethereum. And then this will also lead to a different topic for other videos where it's like, well, if you're going to mine in a bear market and you'll be paying electric out of pocket, what GPUs do you want to own to speculatively mine? Do you want to own NVIDIA cards? Do you want AMD cards? And then obviously you need to narrow in on what models. Like for example, like I won't go into much detail in this video, but it's like I would probably prefer owning a 3070 over a 3080, mainly because the 3070 has Samsung memory for the most part and uses GDDR6, which is more power efficient compared to GDDR6X. So those are the kinds of things I'll probably be talking about in other future videos, but for now, I'm just getting prepared for this bear market. I know what my electric cost is, so it's 500 bucks a month. If I'm speculatively looking out, you know, one, two years ahead, I'll probably need anywhere between six to $12,000 in the next 24 months if I plan on mining then. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap up my video. If you guys have any questions or suggestions for future content, make sure you leave a comment. They're always appreciated. And that's how I can always help kind of like navigate where I put my content and focus in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for your attention. And I wish you all the best with mining. Take care.